as we watched this historical problem evolve, some cultures decided that the individual has no right over choosing a particular method of health and healing. Because right now in the Western civilization, we only have a method of medicine, the allopathic medicine method, which is considered to be, now listen carefully, co-equal with truth, government. It is the one way to be healthy. Whereas throughout the world, there are alternative systems of healing, methods of healing, which include diet, herbs, medicines, all kinds of medical practices and procedures, an understanding of our intrinsic nature at birth. Those methodologies are not currently considered by Western civilization to be medicine. So you could say that, in a sense, accidentally, modern medicine, modern pharmaceutical companies, and technology which has now become completely all-pervasive and invasive, have conspired together loosely, not as a conspiracy per se, but to have the ability to absolutely control human behavior. This is the historical moment we find ourselves in. And I personally found it remarkable and very unique and interesting that the people who are driving our goods all across the country, that the truck drivers, and think of it as a metaphor, they're in the truck and they're on a mission and each mission is an independent mission. Think of it as a lifetime. Each trucker has a lifetime. They drive from here to here, transporting the necessities of life. That they are the ones who brought the violation of individuality to our attention is truly amazing and wonderful. Because they had no other philosophy that they were projecting other than the right of the individual to exist, uninvaded by anything else that was unnecessary. And so we find ourselves looking at the culture of Canada right now and seeing that in a country we thought was the gentle essence of democracy, we see the threat of demagoguery which we have never seen from Canada before in this particular way. Prime Minister Trudeau refused any talks with the protesters, refused to communicate with them, to everyone's surprise, then imposed the National Security Emergency Act, unprecedented power, unprecedented use of force, in the face of something which he previously would have called a democratic process, a protest against something that might be problematic. He froze bank accounts. He did things that we could only think of with historical figures that were demagogues. We could only think of those who used singularly brutal powers to accomplish their aims. And yet, prior to that, he was considered the poster man, the poster boy for democracy. We're observing something very important here. And this it requires a new definition of our individual rights. And that definition in India is rooted in a long view where someone like Narendra Modi was careful to set a precedent and an example of listening and communicating. And we have just seen one of the supposedly most benign modern democracies go off the rails, become a demagoguery, become a militant, intolerant, dangerous government. I would propose to you that this is a warning signal for us to re-examine how our world is evolving, 
you'll notice that people were booted offline by Trudeau. They were, their bank accounts were frozen. This signals to us we're in a very precarious moment where excessive force is increasingly going to be possible because of technology, where moneyed interests have unprecedented amounts of influence controlling the behavior of politicians and of all people. This is a warning, a historical moment in which we should all pay careful attention that the rights that are intrinsic to us, and if you follow the thinking of our true immortal self in eternity, a true individuality that does not die, then this challenge needs to be met, not just with arguments over medicine and science, but rather with what the truck drivers were wise enough to present to us, which is mandates of all kinds in the midst very familiar disease, a kind of flu, that that should escalate to mandates based on fear, control, dominance, dominating income, dominating who's online, all of these demagogic forms of action should be a warning to us. And when I heard the truck drivers, I heard the horns honking, blaring, and at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, in the Mahabharata, in the great epic story in India of the threat to human individuality, what we saw was before the battle began, they blew upon conch shells and trumpets, as was the custom. That was 5,561 years ago. It's the key struggle over democracy, over the individual. And now we just watched the horns of the truck drivers. So since the Mahabharata was called the Battle of Kurukshetra, I saw the truck drivers warning to us all, their horns signaling to us this moment is dangerous, wake up, pay attention. I called it the Battle of Kuru Trakshetra. These honorable, honest workers who have no other motivation, who contrary to the malignant rumors spread about them are not working for foreign powers, are not in any way dangerous. In fact, they're the road warriors who keep our driving on the highways safe because they're so good at what they do. Let us now listen in this historical moment to the honesty of the truck drivers and to the candid honesty of the yogic knowledge of the culture of India that say to us the sanctity of the individual should not be damaged by any situation. We should ensure the sanctity of our individuality. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.